Before I introduce the rest of the panel, I'd just like to say a little bit about the Connected Learning Centre, which is part of the Charitable Education Development Trust. This is our building in South London, which, um, of course, normally would be an absolute hive of activity with children and teachers. And of course, during Bet Week, it would be full of international visitors. Uh, but despite most of our support for schools having become virtual since last March, we were able to have children from very local schools attend sessions with us right up until December, which, which was lovely. At the Connected Learning Centre, we support schools, teachers and school leaders in using digital technology for teaching and learning. We run creative digital making sessions for pupils and we provide technical support for school networks. Today, I'm joined by my Connected Learning Centre colleague, fellow teacher Peter Lillington, and head teachers Kate Atkins and Andrew Davis. And we're going to discuss what school leaders need to consider in planning a digital strategy, something which has become even more crucial since the beginning of the pandemic. For several decades now, leaders of all kinds of organisations have have to, have to think about digital transformation. If you're a leader, there's no avoiding digital. And I very much like this quote from Janet Hughes at Dot Everyone, which is the think tank that was set up by Martha Lane Fox. You know, as a leader, you don't have to be a technical genius, but you do need to understand technological change. And school leaders that were already doing this and had got a grip of this have fared much better since the pandemic began. The breadth of leading digital in education, I think, is captured really well by this visual by Brian Mathers. So from teaching and learning, internal and external communication, IT infrastructure to teacher professional development, digital runs through every aspect of school life. Kate, you are executive head teacher of a multi academy trust the Great Northwood Education Trust and head teacher of Rosendale Primary School in South East London. Can you tell us a, a bit about the digital transformation journey you've led and how your digital strategy has helped Rosendale Primary in the move to remote teaching and learning? Thank you, Sarah. Thanks very much. Um, I just want to start, if that's OK, by saying a really big well done to all school leaders and education professionals for managing to adapt and uh, and shift you know during this time and and do something that is unprecedented that we'd never thought uh, as leaders of schools uh, that we would have to do bringing uh, education into into homes rather than in schools well done all of you you're doing a brilliant job um and also thank you for the opportunity uh, that you've given to me to share uh, the work that we're doing at rosendale and offer some support out there to to other schools Rosendale's got a long history uh, of supporting schools uh, across the country. Um, firstly, uh, as a research school, as part of the Education Endowment Foundation's Research School Network, uh, and now as a specialist partner for research schools, uh, for, sorry, specialist partner for research also with the, with the EEF. Um, I'm going to talk primarily uh, in this section uh, about primary uh, digital strategy. Um, and I'm going to try and give you some sort of general points and then illustrate how we've used those in Rosendale's context, hopefully so that you'll be able to, to take some of that learning and then apply that to your context uh, at school. And really importantly, uh, I think to remember that this is a process. This is a, a kind of a journey and you need to be thinking not only in the short term, but in the medium term as well. And, and think about what is achievable, taking things in bite sized chunks uh, as you go through rather than thinking that everything has to be achieved right at the, at the start of the process. So my first uh, uh, point to share with you is recommending that as much as possible when starting to think about a digital strategy for home learning, start with what you know and use what you, your staff and your families already know and are familiar with. There's going to be enough unfamiliar, unfamiliarity to cope with uh, without having to try to, to learn a whole range of new platforms at the same time. And then those things, new things can be introduced uh, as you go through. 
So, for example, uh, at Rosendale, we've got a long history of using digital technology. The question I think that we set ourselves when we started is how can we use digital technology to enhance and support learning uh, for children in the same way that as adults we use digital technology to support and enhance learning. So we have a, a very interactive website and we've been running class blogs from that website for a long time. We use the WordPress uh, app for our blogs. Um, and those give us a great opportunity to share what's happening in the classroom back at home with parents so that parents can have a, an, an idea of what their children are doing. And again, developing that partnership between home and school, uh, which is obviously even more important uh, in the current climate. Uh, and we also use a digital portfolio called Seesaw. Uh, Seesaw is, is an app that comes from the US. It's designed specifically for education. Um, and it enables children to capture their learning and develop their learning behaviours by evaluating and reflecting on their learning. And very importantly, uh, as a, a kind of tool for great home learning, it enables teachers to give quick, simple feedback uh, on children's learning. So we can set an activity, the children complete the activity either directly on Seesaw or on a piece of paper, which they photograph and, and upload to Seesaw very simply. And within moments, the teacher can see the work that they've done and, and give them some quick feedback on it. Yeah, that's great. You're on the right track. You might want to try doing this. Um, and we know the importance of feedback for developing uh, learning. The Education Endowment Foundation say that it, it's one of the top things uh, that makes a difference in children's education, uh, both in the classroom and at home. You need to know that, that somebody is, is looking and responding at your learning. Um, and we also make sure that when we need to make sure that when we're practicing something, we're, we're practicing it properly uh, so that we develop those neural pathways in, in the right way. The other thing that we thought was very important as we went through this was to build in, in evaluation and reflection points. Uh, we really wanted to know whether or not what we were doing in homeschool was useful um, uh, for our parents uh, and our children. And uh, we discovered the amazing uh, capacity of Google Forms to be a, a great way to get uh, instant feedback. So obviously schools closed on the 20th of March. We, we started home learning. Uh, then we had the pause for the Easter holidays. And at the beginning of the holiday, we uh, sent out a Google form, a questionnaire to our staff, uh, to our parents and importantly to our children um, so that uh, we could get some quick feedback on, on whether or not things were working and, and what wasn't working. And also which parts of the, of the learning were important um, to, to pupils and parents. Um, please remember that if you do ask for feedback uh, from your stakeholders, it's really important that you that you make sure that you do something with those responses uh, and to make it very clear. So we sent out a you said we did letter um, and there were some great suggestions. So, for example, um, parents came back to us and said, it's really difficult. I've got three kids at the school. They've all got three different art activities to do. It, it, it's really hard. Is there any way that you could just give us one art activity? Um, so as a result of that, we set up a, a brand new blog on the website, uh, the, our art studio. And every week we set out a, a, an art challenge uh, or an art activity uh, for families to do together. And then we asked families to take a photograph of what they did and then we uploaded it uh, onto the blog. This was also a great community developer. It meant that our parents could see what other families were doing. Our children could, could see what their friends were doing. And it's also become a fantastic digital archive of the, the work that, that the families did uh, at that time. I also want to emphasise the importance of the personal relationship and it's so vital that schools don't forget this uh, as we're going through uh, this, this distant learning. All pupils, including secondary pupils, want to see their teacher. They want to know that somebody who knows them and cares about them uh, is still have that invested interest for them. And, and actually, it was really important for our teachers as well to be able to see that, that their kids were doing that learning. 
So the first thing that we did um, via our blogs was we asked teachers just to record either on their phone or on their laptop a, a really short daily message out to the kids. You know, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, uh, here's the list of activities that we're going to do. Um, you did a great job yesterday. Uh, I realised the maths was a bit difficult, so we're redoing it again today. Um, and again, building on things that had happened the previous day um, and giving the kids a chance to interact with each other. So our teachers developed it into some really lovely ways. For example, they'd send out a register question um, and, you know, uh, just to make sure that you're all up and on to do your learning. I'm sending out a question. Send me the answer back uh, via Seesaw. Something really simple, you know. Um, if you could have anything for breakfast, uh, what would you choose to eat? And then the kids could quickly give that answer. So we're build, building fun uh, into that dialogue um, as well. And of course, that's evolved now into live Zoom record, uh, live Zoom calls, uh, pre-recorded lessons. Um, Again, another example of, of using that personal relationship, we knew that Joe Wicks was doing some amazing uh, physical activity uh, sessions out there. Um, but we uh, use an organisation called Teach Sport. Uh, we use our sport premium money uh, to buy in uh, these amazing guys to come in and teach PE to our kids. So we asked them if they would do uh, a, a kind of daily little fitness video uh, for, for the kids. And the children absolutely loved seeing Mr. Campbell and Mr. Rookwood uh, doing exercises for them and doing some skill sessions. Um, and it was also great because it meant that Kieran and Kelsey could say, you know, guys, we did this in our P lesson a couple of weeks ago. We know you know how to do this. Remember that we're going to modify it slightly so that you can um, you can do it inside. It means that it's relevant to the circumstances uh, of our kids. And keeping that connection between the pupils and, uh, and the staff had an enormous positive impact on the mental health and well-being of the staff and uh, of the pupils as well. In fact, we got an amazing comment on one of the Google forms uh, when one of our kids saying, you know, it's so lovely knowing that you've not forgotten about me and you're still there for me. It's a really important thing to do. And my, first, my fourth point um, is use the experts. There are lots of great resources uh, out there. Um, we use uh, the White Rose Maths scheme of work, for example, uh, and they have wonderful modelling videos, uh, these maths experts uh, modelling certain um, calculation strategies uh, that were happening. And so we use those uh, those White Rose videos because we realised that actually we couldn't do anything better ourselves. But what we could do uh, as teachers um, was to be able to say, OK, so in this modelling video, uh, you're going to see this. And we could we could help and moderate the kids to do to use the videos successfully. Remember to pause when the, the instructor tells you to pause. And in fact, then we started using them back in the classroom. Uh, one, so that the kids could practice in class uh, skills that they were going to be using at home. So the teacher could model and saying, right, this is the, 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 um, the experts told you to pause the video here. So this is where we're going to pause. We're going to try and do the activity that they've told us and, and then see whether or not we've got the right answer. So that when they went back, uh, in, if they went back, when they went back into homeschool, um, they, we developed the skills that they had for, for using uh, those particular videos. The other thing that I think is very interesting about that, and I'm, I'm still sort of musing on as I go along, is the great thing about a, a video recording is no matter how time, how many times you play it, they use exactly the same vocabulary. Uh, and we know uh, that language learning and being very specific with language is hugely important uh, to young children. I think sometimes as teachers, uh, we'll try and explain something in three different ways. Uh, and if you're struggling with, with language or you have a limited access to language, that can be quite confusing for you. So I think there's something quite interesting there as we reflect back on our, on our own classroom practice. Um, and uh, I think finally, um, we are a Kagan model school uh, at Rosendale. So we wanted to make sure that we carried on using uh, those Kagan cooperative learning strategies. Um, we uh, work with a, a guy called Gavin Clues, who's the Kagan provider in the UK. His website is T2TUK. I'll, I'll send you uh, that. We'll have a link to that. Um, 
And he got some great ideas for, for tips to make sure that uh, Zoom lessons are, are being really interactive. So, for example, um, his, you know, a classroom management tip, he, he says um, to say to the kids, OK, and set you this little activity to do. Write me the sentence when you've done it. Switch your camera off. And then I'll know that you when everybody's finished the activity. Um, it's also a great prompt if you're taking a little bit uh, too long to get the activity done. You can see that lots of people have switched the camera off. So it kind of prompts you to, to be a, a little bit quicker. Our, our children sit in mixed attainment pairs um, and they know who their shoulder partner is. That's an important part of their learning in the classroom. So we'll say, OK, on the Zoom call, look, find find where your shoulder partner is. And, and when they've written the answer to the question, give them a big thumbs up um, so that they know uh, that, that you've seen them. Again, developing those relationships and using some of the similar practices that we have in the classroom uh, outside uh, in the home uh, classroom. So just to recap, use what you already know and use. Uh, make sure that you evaluate and improve and refine your, your home learning. Don't underestimate the importance of personal relationships. That, that, that's hugely vital to, to kids. And use the experts. There are some great resources out there uh, that you can use. You, you don't have to do everything yourself. And I suppose uh, my sort of final plea uh, and point to school leaders is remember that learning isn't just sitting in front of a, a, of a live, live Zoom lesson all day. We need to make sure that we're building a, a variety of tasks and activities for our children. We want our young children to be building dens and creating art and solving problems and singing and, and dancing. Um, and looking out at the world around them. I think that the fact that we've had to think so hard about education in this way is an extraordinary opportunity. Uh, and I know that it's gonna have a huge impact on developing how we think about education once we're back in the classroom. Kate, thank you so much for sharing um, your experiences at Rosendale and, and very much um, bringing to life um, the, the, the relationships and the um, what's actually going on in a school, even when it's a virtual school. So thank you very much for that. And Peter, um, Kate covered a whole range of aspects there about digital strategy. Can you say a little bit more about um, what school leaders um, what some, some other things that school leaders should be considering as we move through this period of rapid change. Yes, thanks, Sarah. Well, at this moment, school leaders and staff will want to be focusing on immediate needs and issues, but they'll also have an eye on developing capacity into the future to ensure best outcomes for students and to support staff and their communities and stakeholders. And digital strategy isn't something new for schools, of course. For example, here's how the DFE represented uh, things a couple of years ago. Pre-remote, pre-home and pre-blended learning. And we're delighted to continue to recommend a newly updated but tried and tested tool that covers six key elements that are critical to progressing, whatever your favourite models and analyses are. I'm talking about the NACE self-review framework with its six elements of leadership and management, teaching and learning with technology, digital safeguarding and assessment of digital capability, professional development and resources and technology. There's a clear progression set out across these elements and their strands. And this animation coming up gives you the gist. This is a school. Teachers, pupils, parents and visitors rely on technology in this school. Schools are incredibly busy and so management of this technology to advance education is a challenge. The NACE self-review framework helps schools to get full value from the adoption of technology. It supports you in several areas such as what impact is education technology having on your school? How is EdTech improving outcomes, engagement and essential digital skills? Is the school providing teachers with high quality EdTech CPD? Are you ensuring the safe and secure use of technology in your school? 
answered, I'm not sure to any of these, then the SRF is for you and now includes support for remote education. The self-review framework tool is freely available to NACE school members, as is access to advice, support and lots more. And it gives me great pleasure to hand over now to Andrew Davis, head teacher on the NACE Board of Management, to explain more in depth. And Andrew, I've got two questions for you, please. So question one is, how has the NACE uh, SRF helped you as a school leader in developing your digital strategy, I guess, over a while? And then question two, I know, Andrew, you were involved in the recent rewriting of the SRF. Um, can you tell us how the framework has been updated to support learning beyond school? Yes, certainly. Thank, thank you, Peter. And it's lovely to listen to Kate and what she's doing, the things she's doing in your school as well. That's really heartwarming. Well, I'm Andrew Davis. I'm here today with two different hats on. First of all, I'm on the board of NACE, but I'm also a head teacher of a school in Shropshire. And we're on the border of England and Wales. You can imagine the exciting times we're having deciding which country we're back <laughs> for at the moment. Now, the SRF has been going for 20 or so years, and we've had 14,000 schools undertake it. Some of those schools have gone on to achieve the NACE mark and a national accreditation for their achievements in technology. Um, a free copy of the PDF of what I'm talking about, the framework, is available on the website. And I've been very happy to be part of the panel, which has actually recently updated um, the SRF. So I'm going to tell you my little story, how I came, it all came about. I was appointed in a school in South Shropshire, and I had 60 children in the school. At that time, I didn't realise such small schools existed. And the school was literally in the middle of nowhere. It took me a week to actually find the school on the map. When I arrived at the school, there was no technology, not much vision limited internet, but it was plenty of sheep and a lovely countryside around it. And I came across the NACE SRF and the self-review framework. And this transformed my whole vision for teaching and my philosophy behind it. And it really helped me develop my strategy um, in the school um, and my vision I had. We were awarded an ACE mark and eventually awarded an excellence award for best primary by Bechter, which is an amazing achievement for such a small school. But the self-review framework has been at the heart of everything I have done for the last 20 years in, in education. It's asked us how I, we're doing things, why are we doing things, when are we doing things, how are we going to use technology to benefit the pupils? And 20 years along, we're still having those same conversations. And I think particularly now, schools are readdressing how we're using technology, why we're we going to use it and when we're we going to use it at homes. So I'd like to talk about now the teaching and learning side. You know, what do we actually want? This is section two called teaching and learning. What do we actually want the pupils to do? And we focus on NACE, but looking at it at home as well as at school. So I think home, the learning now needs to be blended across school at home so that the transference of skills goes from one to the other. So, for example, when a child does a piece of work at school, they can go home and carry on and continue that piece of work at home. Just like now, children at home can carry on doing the work which the rest of the peers are doing in the classrooms. As a school ourselves, we've identified that the way remote learning looks for different children in different cohorts is very different. There's not one model fits all. So the way the approach we've done for our reception children is obviously very, very different than what we're doing for our year six children. And I think when schools come out of this lockdown, we've got to reevaluate the way we work in schools for children and the way we do. Looking at the use of technology, Kate's given some lovely examples of how technology has been used in school and at home. And I think as leaders, we need to be very focused on those aspects of it. One strand is assessment. Well, of course, we're going to assess children. I think now it's very difficult for all of my staff to assess children for every lesson on a daily basis. So the self-review framework has made us consider over the years which is the best way of doing it. You know, I think it's unrealistic to expect teachers to be able to physically mark and feedback on every piece of work. So what we've looked at is how can the technology support teachers in monitoring pupils, in tracking pupils, 
But importantly, how can a technology support teachers and not increase their actual workload? So we've looked at quite a blended approach ourselves. One area, digital safeguarding, and safeguarding is paramount to all we're doing in schools. One example as a school, we've ensured that we've identified a whistleblowing procedure. So when pupils are working at home, whether at school, at home, if they have any concerns what's actually happening, what facilities has the school got placed to act for the children to actually sort of reiterate their concerns. At Belvedere Primary a few years ago, we developed our own e-safety strategy and it's called the Bells E-Way. And it's a strategy we put through out the entire school, which I'm happy to share with people. Um, but one thing we've identified as a staff, when we look at staff's professional development, it's lovely all of a sudden we have to do home learning. We expect to do home learning. Staff are immediately expected to have the skills to implement home learning, to find the activities. So the one thing as a staff we need to look at is professional development for teachers. What is the school providing to support the teachers, support the pupils at home? I think that's crucial. Um, and the final area we, we've actually got is resource and technology. Over the years, we've spent many hours discussing what technology do we have in school? How are we going to use it? What's it used for? And the one thing we've realised is we use different technology as a tool for the job. If we want to write something down, we might use a pencil. There are other times we actually want to use a computer for it. And the self-review framework will help us evaluate how we're actually using that technology um, for the best. And what we've decided as a school is that we use a wide range of resources for different reads. We've got the curriculum, the vast range of different subjects. It's also dependent on the needs of the pupils. But I think the one important part through this for children at home, as Kate mentioned now, we've got to keep it learning exciting. We've got to keep it fun and we've got to keep it varied for the pupils. Um, and to finally finish with, I know on the 23rd of March, uh, NACE is going to be contributing to the Media Planet's Future of EdTech campaign, which is going to be distributed through the Guardian newspaper. So if people do feel like it's more information about NACE and what we're actually doing, you know, please have a little look at this on the 23rd of March. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to find out more, uh, do visit the NACE website. Thank you, Andrew. And um, what I've always liked about the self-review framework is just how comprehensive it is and how it helps teachers and governors and school leaders to, to really kind of generate that clear vision. And, and also it actually helps you, kind of almost handholds you into creating a solid action plan as well for digital transformation. This, this week, we're really excited to be launching a free resource, which we hope will help school leaders, teachers and governors. So um, BlendEd, is a new website and a program of professional development. And it's, it's been supported by IBM's trustee fund. It very much focuses on the pedagogy of blended learning and remote learning. It provides advice from teachers and school leaders, as well as short courses and guides. And we've curated um, you know, what we hope is sort of like some of the, the kind of best of the great materials that have been um, created by other organisations. We know so many organisations are producing fantastic um, materials for, for, for teachers. So we want BlendEd to become a kind of one stop shop. So you can just come there and you can find everything that you need um, as a school to support your um, blended um, learning provision. And if you'd like to share some of your experiences and practices with us, please do get in touch. I'll um, give our contact details at the end of this. Um, so before we um, uh, move into questions, I think Peter's just going to signpost a few other useful reports and resources um, and, and, uh, and, and we'll be linking to on all of those on the BlendEd site. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, uh, we've been extremely selective. Uh, but we can recommend guidance from the EEF, um, including a 7th of January blog about relative merits of live and recorded lessons. Um, the school planning kit, which was updated in December, and the evidence reviews, not only of remote learning, but also of remote CPD for teachers, uh, picking up some of the themes that we've heard about. Uh, we also like uh, this guide from UCL's Educate 
initiative that's headed up by Professor Rose Luckin, um, buying the right ed tech for your school. And you can register and download that for free if you're interested. And advice from Southwest Grid for Learning at the UK Safer Internet Centre will keep you on top of safeguarding issues, which Andrew, you mentioned uh, as, as obviously really important. And when you have time after the SRF, there's a popular framework to follow on um, 360 safe uh, that we'd also recommend. And the DFE's EdTech Demonstrator Hub continues with events and school peer-to-peer -peer support in England as well. Sarah. Thank you. And um, just to add to that, every week at the Connected Learning Centre, we produce a, a newsletter covering all of the, the, the issues that we've been talking about um, today and also very kind of practical suggestions and ideas um, for teachers in the classroom. So please do um, sign up on our website um, for, uh, for our newsletter and follow us on Twitter. And... Uh, I've just put uh, email addresses there for myself and Peter if you'd like to get in touch. So um, just to finish, just want to say a, a really big thank you to, to Kate and to Andrew. Thank you.